Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to learn some techniques of graphing that involves also information we get from the second derivative. Remember the first derivative gives you the slope of the function. It tells you whether or not the slope is increasing or decreasing. So here we wrote the first derivative. It tells us how fast the function is changing. It gives us the slope. What does the second derivative tell us? Well, the second derivative tells us how fast the slope, which is the derivative of the function, is changing. That tells us the concavity. So summarizing it, we can say that if the derivative is greater than zero, the function is increasing. If the derivative is less than zero, the function is decreasing. If the function is increasing, we know the slope is positive. If the function is decreasing, we know the slope is negative. But what about the second derivative? Well, if the second derivative is greater than zero, we know that the slope is increasing. Remember, the second derivative gives you the change of the first derivative. It gives you the change of the change of the function, so to speak. So the second derivative tells you how fast the first derivative is changing. It tells you how the slope is changing. And so therefore, if the second derivative is positive, it tells you that the derivative, the slope is changing in a positive manner, meaning the slope is getting larger. The slope is increasing. We call that concave up. And if the second derivative is negative, that means the slope is decreasing. It's getting smaller. So therefore, slope decreasing, we call that concave down. Now there's a little bit of confusion because, for example, the slope could be positive and decreasing. The slope can be negative and decreasing. So that seems kind of strange. In both cases, the second derivative will be negative. So let's take a few visual examples here. Here I drew a function, and you can see here that the slope is decreasing because it's getting smaller. Here it's very steep. You can see that the slope is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. At some point the, the slope stops getting smaller and now the slope is getting larger again. But for the entire function right here, the slope is always positive. There's no place anywhere along this function where the slope is ever negative. So here we can say the slope is positive all the way along here and here we can still say that the slope is positive. So we can say that if we took the derivative of that function everywhere we'll find that the derivative would be greater than zero. But notice here since the slope is getting smaller and smaller and smaller even though it is positive the slope is decreasing we can then surmise, we can conclude that therefore on this portion of the function the second derivative will be negative. So let's write that down here, at least I'll mark that in blue. So here in blue we can see that the slope is decreasing so therefore f double prime of x, the second derivative has to be smaller than zero, meaning the slope is getting smaller, the slope is decreasing, so therefore we can say that this is concave down. And this is where the confusion comes in. Say, well, how can it be concave down if the slope is positive? It simply means, concave down simply means that it could be positive, it could be negative, but it's getting smaller. Over here we can say that the slope is getting larger, so therefore we know that the second derivative must be positive. So we can say that f double prime of x, the second derivative, must be greater than zero. And here you can see that the slope is getting steeper, it's getting larger, it's getting it's increasing, and so therefore this is called concave up. All right, so hopefully that makes it clear. Now I have a, a second example here, we'll go through that. Here we can see that from there to there, the slope is positive. And then at some point we have what we would call a local maximum. This is where the slope is zero. So you can see here that the slope is positive, and then from there to there the slope is negative, and the slope is all, keeps on being negative, all the way until we reach this point which can be considered a local minimum. So between the local max and the local min the slope is negative, over here the slope is positive, and over here the slope is positive. So let's write that down, so slope positive right here from there to there, from there to there slope is negative, and then from there to there slope is positive again. So that's a shorthand way of writing positive slope, negative slope, positive slope. Derivative greater than zero, derivative smaller than zero, derivative greater than zero. Well, what about the second derivative? Notice that the slope here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it's decreasing. Eventually the slope reaches zero, now the slope becomes a negative number. But the slope continues to decrease, so even though the slope is negative, 
the negative number gets bigger, the absolute value of the number gets bigger, so the slope continues to decrease until we reach this point right here. And now, even though the slope is negative, the slope begins to increase. So all the way from there to there, and I'll use blue for that, all the way from there to there, to this point right there, the slope is decreasing. So slope is decreasing, which means that the second derivative must be less than zero. So here, it doesn't matter if the slope is positive or negative, this whole section right here, the slope is decreasing continu continuously till we reach that point. So therefore, the second derivative is negative. We can therefore say it is concave down. And now, from this point out, you can see even though the slope is negative, it begins to increase. And so for this whole section right here, oh, try to take the cap off here. All right, here the slope is increasing. So slope is increasing. That means the second derivative of the function is greater than zero. It's positive, which means this is concave down, uh, concave up, because the slope is increasing. What about the point right there that separates those two, right there. Well, if the second derivative here is negative and the second derivative here is positive, that point there, f double prime of x has to be equal to zero. That's where the second derivative equals zero. And that's a very special critical point. We call this, what do we call it? Thank you. We call this the inflection point. So when the second derivative equals zero, this means that we have an inflection point. And we'll talk a little bit more about inflection points in the next video, because there's two different kinds of inflection points, but they all have the one thing in common. An inflection point is a point where the second derivative is zero, where we go from concave down to concave up, or concave up to concave down. So here's a nice little summary about how we can utilize the information from the first derivative and the second derivative to see what the function looks like. First derivative tells us if the slope is positive or negative. Second derivative tells us if the function is concave down or concave up. And the point where we go from one to the other, like right here and right here, that is called the inflection point. And at that point, the second derivative equals zero.